but maybe I'll, I'll start things off and, and just kind of get back to the, the origin story here. Uh, what was your, 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 your way into the story? Uh, how long did it take to sort of uh, get this whole thing, this whole thing done? And, uh, you know, uh, and don't leave a single day out. Oh, <laughs> well, then we, we have to start all over and be here tomorrow. Yeah, um, well, we'll do that. Yeah, it took forever, um, mostly because it, it kind of started out as, as I was just going to do this little film about the zipper leaving Coney Island, and I went to talk to Eddie and Larry, and I said, can I please film when it leaves, and then I'll just go to Chance and make a little homage to the zipper. And then Eddie got another summer, and so we, we filmed, we got in their way a lot, and they let us film, which was great because all, like so much stuff was still there. The Astro Tower was still moving. We shot it in there. And, mm. So that summer was, you know, pretty busy and it was great. Um, and, that, and it was really at its peak then. It was really, really crowded that summer. It was a great summer and it was really packed. And um, so we got a lot of good footage then. And then, you know, fall came and I, I kept, you know, reading the paper and trying to understand, like, how could it happen? What was happening? I really wasn't paying attention. Like most people, I had no idea what was going on. No clue. Right. I don't know about ULERP and zoning and land use and... Who can follow that? It's so complicated and it takes forever and it goes on for a really long time and they have all these meetings and people give testimony and something gets written in the paper and you sort of follow along but then you turn around one day and Astro Land's gone. You don't know what happened. So, um, so I just started to interview politicians and I started with Recchia and then, you know, went on from there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, oh, so was it because, because I mean, I know that there are a number of filmmakers in here who make films about these similar issues of development and, and, and whatnot, and, and they're, they were kind of impressed by uh, your access to Joe Sid and to, to others in the film, um, uh, where normally maybe they'd be a lot more uh, cautious about talking to somebody who, you know, who's going to make their own story. Well, I was, I was stupid. That. Yeah, I was dumb. Yeah, well, no, seriously, I didn't know. I didn't know anything, so, so I just went. That out there. Oh, she's stupid. We'll <laughs> Probably. Just talk to her. No, it's I mean, crazy. I just I went just wanting to know what everybody wanted to know. Like, if you were the normal layperson and you were trying to figure out what was going on, I went to understand that. It wasn't until we got all the footage back and we were sifting, you know, everything out and editing and Joan and I sat in a basement for six months trying to understand what was happening. Right. And there were so many little things that just were like, wait a minute, what? What? That doesn't make sense. And then I would go and do some research and try to figure out what really happened, why, you know, especially the whole um, thing about the, the whole 2003, um, that super, figuring that out. Mm -hmm. That came from something Seth Pinsky said, which was, well, you know, in 2003, we decided, and it was this compl complicated sentence, it was like, that the uses the city thought were viable were bloody, 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 and I was like, what? I had to call somebody at the EDC and say, what does he mean by that? And basically, it was, they decided in 2003 that amusements weren't, it wasn't going to make enough money for that land value. Right. So it was kind of over then, basically, right. you yeah. know, and I just was like, Wow, that's crazy. When I was a teenager, my mother stupidly let me work in Ocean City for the summer um, several times. And um, yeah, that, there were some, I burned some brain cells there. But um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's kind of the same. It's, it's like there's, there's small amusement parks there. There's actually, Trippers is still there. They let, us, they let us go and take some sound there because we couldn't really do sound so much in Coney Island. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ocean City, you know, East Coast, carnival culture, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know, I just kind of grew up around it a little bit, so, yeah. I'm like, you know, a kid of the 70s, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, you have to like all that stuff. Spencer gifts and you know, zippers right. and I don't know. Okay. You have to like all that stuff. He did come from Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he, yeah, he grew up. Did you get the question? Yeah, the question did Joe, about did Joe said, yeah, did he, uh, he think he had any sense of loyalty to his hometown? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of answers. Yeah, a lot of people don't think so. I mean, who knows? I think at some point, at the height of all of the, the media coverage, he was probably a little flattered because he really does think that he's Joey Coney Island and, you know, he's kind of into all that. But, you know, he's so far removed from the day-to-day -day of 
what happens with his business, I think. I mean, I think he, he probably likes Coney Island the same as everybody else, but he's a businessman. He looked at it and went, why is all this vacant land here? We could put a big hotel and, you know, Dave and Buster or something. So, yeah. I guess we all see it. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Own, we all see our own Coney Island, and he saw it his own, mm -hmm. as his. Um, more questions? The what question is about the part? acreage. The, yeah, the final acreage was 6.9 that was left, 6.9 uh, acreage. Well, it's kind of, it's hard. It's, it's hard to parse that out, but essentially what ended up happening was originally the plan was 15 acres. And many people, even though they thought that was a lot less than 60, mm -hmm. many people, even, you know, people who were following the story way, way, way before me, felt that that was fair. Mm -hmm. They felt that that was okay, and that, yeah, okay, so, because it was only about, I see 10 or 11 in 2006, when it was kind of at its peak, it was about 10, 11 acres of stuff. Which, you know, some summers was more, some summers was less, depending on who set up on the fringes. When it, re when it got reduced to nine point whatever, that was the amount of acreage that had to be taken from the parkland. So at some point, you can't make it any less because when you swap parkland, you have to swap it acre for acre. So, you know, when Lynn Kelly says, you know, we have to take parkland from here and move it from here, if you do the math, it's about nine and change. Sometimes you'll hear things, if you read about coming on, that say 12 acres or a 27 acre entertainment retail area. The 27 acres covers, you know, the hotels and all the crap like that. The 12 probably glues on a couple of other parks. So you have to be very careful how you listen to what information you get because it's presented it's slightly right. different every time, sure. depending on the speech. There were a lot of people at the city council, and I kind of cut the speeches out because I was pissed, that got up and gave these big flowery speeches and then said, yeah, go ahead. I, and you just go, what? You know, yeah. like said they didn't agree with it, blah, 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 but they're doing it for Dominic, you know, because the whole thing is like, everybody votes for each other's things. Right. And Dominic's thing was coming out, so. Politics. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have for one more? Make it a, a very, very, try to make it very, do you, do you think the city is deluded in their notion that Coney Island will ever be something more than a seasonal attraction? Well, I have found that there was a lot of like year round, year round, year round, year round, year round, and yeah, I don't hear those words anymore. And actually, uh, last couple times I've heard things or seen things in the paper, it's been like, well, you know, it is a beach. So, who knows, who knows, I mean, I, I don't see anybody going down there in the winter, it's, you know, it's, yeah, these guys said that all the time, you know, it's like, who's coming in the winter, you know, so. A lot of people like me, you walk around and you go, why, why is that store there now? What happened to the fat guy with the kitty cat? Like, I liked him, you know, and, you know, we pay a lot of taxes. And I just started to go, okay, hold on. Why do I live in somewhere that looks like every other city now? How did that happen? And I think a lot of my friends started to feel the same way over the last 10 years. And, you know, it's no, it's no coincidence, you know? But Coney Island, I just went, okay, all right. Now I have to put my foot down because that place was the place that you went right. to get away from the gentrification of the city. So now where are you going to go? Um, and it was special. It was, I mean, these guys are the heart and soul of Coney Island. It was full of guys like them. It is, it's a magical place. Yeah, it's a little rough around the edges. Not always the cleanest place. It, a lot of people wearing bathing suits that may, maybe shouldn't. <laughs> but it's so fun and great. And I can't, Nobody here tonight. Yeah, I can't, no I can't sum it up any better than Eddie and, and, and those guys did that. at the end. Yeah, what they said at the end is really how I feel now, too. Can we get a, um, updates on you guys? <laughs> on that point, yeah, my step uncle that used to have a kitty park in Coney Island, he's getting evicted by Thor. We lost his lease. We have to be out of there by December 31st. After 55 years on that corner. Yeah, these guys spent all day packing up rides today. Of another place. We don't want to negotiate. Yeah. He wants us out. And the last couple of days we've been tearing down, just like Eddie had to tear his zipper down. We're out of business. The end. Yeah. So, what do I do after that? I guess I go back at the carpentry. You know, that's what I do. But I'm going to miss the business. 
you know, I've been there all my life. It's sad, like everybody says. And you know something? I'm happy Amy made this film to let everybody know what really happened down there with this prick Thor, in my opinion, <laughs> and made so many people's lives miserable. Thank God Amy's letting people know this, you know, what's going on down there. Good job, Amy. <laughs>